So one of the cool things about tugs um, is the, the Z drive, the azimuth drive. And perhaps you can tell us about sort of when that started coming around and uh, what its advantages are. And because I know you, you definitely came up on, on twin screws and so forth. So uh, maybe you can explain the difference. I think it'd be really cool for people to, to hear how these tugs propel themselves. They're, they've been around a while. The French uh, came up with the first one. The, the voice, voice Schneider was the first designer. And actually they're, they're giant egg beaters is what they are, or outboard motors that turn all the way around. If you look at it that way, there's two, two in the stern and most of the boats they turn all the way around or you can turn one and keep the other one straight or whatever they, they're very handy for ship docking uh more so than they are for towing offshore yeah big alaskan water tows are done with conventional twin screw boats but when they get near shore they they are picked up by these tractor tugs that they call them and, and then that the boy snyder is one single drive that's or it can be twin, but they're different. They have the veins that turn like in a hydro project, like in a dam. Yep. And as they adjust, that's your thrust, whether you're going straight forward or back or to the right or whatever. And some of those boats, they go faster sideways in a convention boat. Conventional boat will go straight ahead. Wow. Right yeah. All the power they have. They're building them now 5,000, 6,000 horsepower. And almost all your ports have at least one to dock ships, and the right. the owners of the ship companies are, are mandating. I want tractor tugs to, right. to handle my equipment, you know. So most tugs, this, most tugs are are twin screw, meaning they have two engines, two propellers, um, and basically these azimuth drive tugs. Um, this propulsion system allows these tugs to basically spin on a dime, three hundred and sixty degrees. So the maneuverability is, is incredible. So that's what you're saying is yeah. basically, you know, when you're trying to dock a ship, a larger ship in port, um, being able to maneuver this, this tug 360 degrees, you could literally shoot it sideways if you want. Um, it's a, it's a big advantage to, to docking ships. It is. Yeah. They have, uh, and, and they have a Z drive class and, and, uh, Z drives will take asthma thing boat will take a ship through narrow waters with through like Chelsea Creek and places in Boston and, and narrow areas where it's tough maneuvering for the ship itself and so they'll help they'll hook onto the bow of one and tow it through right you know, and they'll have another one on the stern as a safety and and a lot of your your big terminals your big VLCC terminals will do these test the drills they put them on the stern with a single headline up, and if they lose steering, if the ship loses steering, which happens more than people know, steering and propulsion, if they lose, right. then this that's on the stern is capable and able to stop that ship in a short length of time, a reasonable length of time, and also it can it can steer for the ship from a back right. on the stern, and it's a huge safety factor. They do annual testing on it. They do uh, these big these big tankers are really liking having those, yeah. those big tractors around. There's, there's a couple at the Cape Cod Canal. They escort all the barges and ships open ninety, maintained maintained that oil barges crewed and, and heavy oil barges will be tethered to a tractor going through the Cape Cod Canal. It's a big deal. Yeah, and the, it's uh, the boats are expensive. They're expensive to build and to maintain, but but they uh, they do the trick, you know. It's, yeah. it's the way of the future. No, the you're... lines, biggest, the biggest uh, fallback in the whole area is the line that you hook to, you tied to. Steel cable is, has been the the norm for a lot of years, and now it's been replaced with a spectral line, which is which is uh, carbon fiber, right. totally unbreakable, with no stretch. There's no stretch to it at all. So when it breaks, if it ever does break. It just falls in the water. It doesn't snap back and kill people. And right, right. Break windows. It just falls in the water, and, and it'll last forever. The, the enemy of it is the sun. Yeah. And so you keep them covered up. But the, each of them has a big winch on the front of it, and that's what that winds that spectra line up. So it's 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 foolproof for a deckhand. It's it's better for a deckhand to be able to hook up to a ship 
and and the winches are all operated by the captain in the wheelhouse. So the guy can the deckhand can stare it out of the way all the yeah. time. And that's that's a good deal. It's funny you bring that up because earlier you mentioned um, hawser. You know, you get like four to eight inch diameter rope, and what size now are they using? Uh, with Spectra for for towing line, not even close. Yeah, our our hawser was our hawser was eight inch diameter on our big boat, and we bought a roll of that Spectra. It was one inch. Wow! To, wow! To be equal to what that eight inch vanilla uh, vanilla we call it. Yeah, and it's light. It's light inch, stuff you know, as well. Inch inch a, yeah, that's amazing. So one of the cool things about NMI here is we have a Z drive uh, simulator and that thing is a blast to use. I think the, the coolest thing for me is if you get the twin twin drive azimuth, you can literally keep the boat in its spot, in its place um, without using what we call dynamic positioning devices. Um, so just using the, the vectors or the angles of the two um, jets basically um, you can keep the boat stable in any position, uh, and keep it essentially fixed. And with a traditional sc screw engine, you could not do that. Um, it's forward or back, or, you know, you're working on a much bigger radius and it's a blast. And, you know, hopefully one day I'll, if it's just for fun, even, I, you know, having you run me through all the towing assessment stuff would be a blast. It's tough. A twin screw boat is tough to get alongside a ship and to get on a 90 degree angle. You do your most, your best advantage if you're a 90 degree angle to the ship. If the ship's moving up river three, four, five knots, you're not going to twin screw that, that tugboat that that hard against the current. And right. so a tractor will shove itself right around side two and it can handle it. It can take it without swamping, without going under and, and uh, or if they want, they can run fore and aft, but just push the thrusters sideways. They can do all their thrusting, right? Head it up, but just run the two screws to the right. You know, yeah, pretty cool. They've been around long enough now, so they're they've got them so that they can pull the drives out if they have to do maintenance on them. Yep, you can pull the drives out through holes in the stern up top on the deck without having to dry dock the, the boat. So that wow. was their first big problem. Wow. They used to have to drive it them all the time to do any kind of work. And now you just, there's a plate that comes off and you pull the drive out, you put a plate over the hole. I didn't know that. And you send the Rolls Royce out to get it worked on and, and put it back in afterwards. And there are a lot of French Rolls Royces. One, there's, there's five different outfits that make them. And they all have their own pluses and minuses, you know. But it, it's, it's a good setup. 